Some people would call the video we're about to do nesting if they are seven and a half months pregnant and waiting for a baby in the next few weeks, but we call it self-quarantine because of where we live in Washington State, the heart of the situation that we will not say because we would like to not be censored shadow banned, demonetized on YouTube, and if you mention that C word, you definitely will be. Oh, and Chaka is just shook if you can hear her caller. Oh, C word. Uh, chores. That's chores. what this is about. This is about choring. So, because we uh, seem to have uh, extra time. Extra time. Which is unfortunate because it means that like Lynn is not working because everything in the world has come to a halt. But work doesn't stop either. So I've got this big honey-do list, my chore list, that, uh, oh yeah, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Well, can't run and hide from it now. So the purpose of this video is actually, uh, I don't wanna say it's a how-to video. However, you guys are gonna kinda work along with me to figure this out. <laughs> Before we kind of get into all the tools and the equipment that I anticipate that we're gonna need for this project and the things that we're gonna do, let's start with what the problem is first. So let's go over here and take a look. Uh, when we moved in, these double doors, these bifolding doors were not installed. The reason why they weren't installed is because for this washer and dryer, with the way that the, the front doors open, these doors, get in the way. They are stackable. So the kit that I found is called the Stack It 4X. You could get it from Home Depot. Uh, and and the, the average price that I was seeing was anywhere from $29 to about $50. And in the case of Home Depot, it ultimately would cost $80 to get this stacking kit, which is all like a pound and a half. It's some basically uh, formed like piece of sheet metal, a couple of screws, a couple of small brackets and some adhesive tape and some protectant tape and it's like what the heck man like how does this thing that's only about 30 bucks go from that to like 80 bucks well here's how they get you folks when you order it for say example home depot you can't order it for in-store pickup you have to order to have it shipped well the way they have it shipped is because they use their whatever appliance team or whatever to actually come and do the delivery, they charge you for the appliance team to actually come out and deliver it for you, not just regular mail delivery. And my assumption would be is because they want you to pay their team to stack the washer and dryer for you. I'm a red blooded American man. I can do things for myself. Um, and it, to me, it's worth saving uh, the possible $150, who knows how much that would cost to have somebody do something for me that I feel personally I can do just fine for myself and I'd rather pocket that money. I mean, heck, that's beer money or in our case, more importantly, that's gonna go towards diapers, bottles, things like that. I actually called Electrolux up directly because I didn't find anything anywhere, let alone like instructions or good videos and some of the videos I found they weren't that great. In fact, a few of the videos, even when you looked them up by serial number, it didn't even show you anything how to use this. It was just an advertisement. In fact, one guy, uh, I think it was like for the Canadian like appliance service or something like that. He's like, how about some instructions for this, uh, for this product here? Th this video is stupid. So this kit, I paid, not counting shipping, I paid about $30. It was like $30.04. And with the shipping, it came out to about $45. I could have gotten it cheaper by going straight to Amazon with it. But again, like I said, I wasn't 100% confident that this was gonna be the exact thing that I wanted. And I, I just, my time at this point is valuable to me. So I, want, I wanted to make sure of that. So you can see this is an actual Electrolux product. And you can see right there too, it, it works with uh, Frigidaire, Tappan, White Westinghouse, uh, Kelvinator and Gibson, right? And this model is the Stackit 4X, and that is for uh, the Electrolux washer uh, EIFLS 60LT1. And it allows you to stack the dryer EIMED60LT3 on top of that washer. You have this metal part right here. It's just a, a stamped piece of, of real thin gauge uh, looks like it's just under a sixteenth of an inch of sheet metal and it's got these little bump outs on it because there's some screws on the bottom of the dryer that this needs to fit around. You have this 
uh, adhesive pad. And that was one of the comments that I saw in some of the other sections. You'll see when you get the kit that there's one side that has the peel tape for this sticky tape. Uh, what I figured out is you don't want to try to peel this blue tape. This is just what is going to rest on top of the washing machine so that it doesn't create damage because obviously the washer and the dryer move. This is basically some clear tape that also adds for some protection against rubbing from the, from the dryer as it's sitting on top of the washer. They are a square drive and Phillips head. So I do have a square drive in the garage. I'll be needing to get that because I prefer to use the square drive over the Phillips head just because it's got some better gripping power. So it looks like here we've got two, four, six screws. You've got two small brackets and two large brackets. So this is something that my wife giggles at me about all the time. I'm a big fan of looking at instructions. I've got a DeWalt impact driver, tape measure just in case I need it, some other different odds and ends and some because uh, I don't know what things I may or may not have to remove over on the actual washer and dryer itself. So uh, some masking tape. I got some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels just so I can clean the surface before I stick anything on it with like this adhesive stuff just so that it has a good uh, clean surface to stick to. You just got busted. What are you doing? You're supposed to be helping. Why aren't you helping? Rolling around on the carpet is not helping. going to probably kill the power uh, on the fuse box and I'm going to go ahead and also shut the, the water off right there. You're also going to need a good set of channel lock pl uh, pliers that is in order to disconnect the hot and cold water uh, feeds that I was talking about for the back of the washer and the dryer. This is going to be similar to how this is going to connect up when I stack this on top of the dryer. So these are the connectors that they used for this pedestal. So I'll be taking this off the pedestal and I will be taking this washer here off its pedestal so that it sits flush with the ground and then I will go ahead and stack them. The reason why I want to move them to the other side is you can see here this is the shelf that the hot water heater sits upon and you can see that the supports for the shelf it only allows the uh, washer to go back so far. I put the dryer closer to the table and now I'm going to just go ahead and disconnect all the screws that have it attached to the pedestal and then I'm just going to tip it over and you got to make that noise when you do it but I'm going to tip it over onto the table. These screws right here and here I'm going to take apart. There's a screw right there and also one right there. This guy is going to get attached to the front of the driver or of the dryer like this. Um, and then I will stick this blue adhesive foam to this. And so this is going to be ready to go. This blue uh, non adhesive backing comes off to reveal the adhesive. So my recommendation to you, if you're using this product, take your time with that so you don't rip the foam. Uh, luckily for me, I took a little patience. I prepped it, so now I can, I can peel that when the time comes, as you can see here. You put this here, you get the, the, the dryer on top of the washer, and then you're gonna we're gonna tip the front of the dryer up so it can remove the blue tape, and then we'll set it back down and it'll adhere. I already cleaned the top of the washer with some isopropyl alcohol. I'll probably hit it one more time just to be Sure. Chaka, are you going to help do the lifting? Now the only thing that I need is my lovely assistant to uh, come and help me out. I guarantee that's mine. One uh, important consideration that I failed to pay attention to because It's not easy going back and forth, reading instructions and trying to film it as you're doing it, but make sure you don't forget like I did. These are leveling feet. 
on the dryer and you want to take them off before we can peel that tape on the front and adhere the front of the, the dryer to the top of the washer, we got to put these brackets on here. So I measured it out, double checked it, but it does, for this particular setup, it takes a long set of brackets. So you, it's got a little notch right there. So all you do is stick it into that slot, slide it all the way over to the right, take your square drive, lift it up like this find your blue tape peel it and stick it on there just be careful when you go to move it around that you don't put a whole bunch of pressure on the top of it because all that is is it's adhesive that's holding it down Chaka loves rolling on her back when dad's talking You saw what they looked like before. They were side by side and the space wasn't really usable. Now, to be able to, I haven't put the other door in yet, but you can see how you can open and close the door and you can see it's not gonna get in the way. The first part of taking these off is you wanna get this bezel off first. To do that, what you need to do is you have to take this screw out of this little plug right here. So that gets the plug out. There, and then just like that, and then you'll slide this over like this. This is the lock. Part. So now you just pop this guy out, and then this pops off like that. That's what engages the lock. There's three bolts right here, or screws that need to come out, and two right here. So I know it's hard to see. That's one. That's two. And that's three. Then all you have to do is these two screws here door should come free. You can't just flip it upside down and call it good. You want the Electrolux label to still be on top and there's some other ways that this stuff has to be in order for it to work. So all you're going to do is take apart the hinges here. side and then you pull that out and you're gonna put that over here and you're gonna pull this off and you're gonna put this over there with that so this guy goes over here guy comes over here like that and then just like that don't over tighten and if you mess it up you'll have to buy a whole new unit for it this one is kind of tricky because it's got some parts to it that go that to help it line up. Oh, that's for sure. I'm going to reattach the uh, locking mechanism. So this now goes right here. And it can be 
bit of a pain sometimes, but there you go, you get it right in there. Put it right like that. This is the tricky part, so you get the screw lined up best as you can. as you can get one, you're good. Chuck, and that's enough. I'm gonna switch this piece over. This is the part that's kind of tricky. So you've got these tabs. That you have to line up. And then you just turn it clockwise and it'll lock into place. Now both your doors will open up the same way. Fini, which is French for done. It's all done, and uh, yeah, one more project off the honey-do list. <laughs>